Hi, it's Wesley with Expandacraft. I know some of you might not recognize me without my goofy hats, uh, but um, we are here today to do an in-water test with four different electric motors. I am on what we call black and tan. That is a 16-foot canoe with a 16-foot Expandacraft outrigger kit on it. Um, we have many videos on the build of the Expandacraft outrigger kit on black and tan. You have to go back and see one through seven. This might be number eight. But today is all about electric motors and testing them. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to test this motor guide 40 pound thrust electric and this Newport Vessels, Newport Vessel uh, 55 uh, pound thrust. I'm going to start with the 55 and end up here. We also have the Vaquita. Now, the Vaquita has its own uh, special battery. It's a lithium ion battery. Uh, this is by far my favorite electric motor. It's also by far the most expensive electric motor. But this thing is amazing. I don't sell them, folks. I'm not a commercial for them. Well, I guess I am a commercial for them, but I don't get paid for it. They're made by E-Propulsion, if e you want to look it up. We'll have a link to, uh, to get to them and you can buy uh, that kit from them. Now they're eight, nine hundred dollars when I bought it. I have no idea what they are now. Uh, then we're gonna do this tiny little water snake. It's an 18 pound thrust motor. And I'm gonna try the amp outdoors battery with it, and it's very light. Um, last time we had it, it didn't last very long, but I suspect that maybe it wasn't fully charged when I got it, so I'm fully charged now. And I'm going to find out how long it will last. And I will actually see how fast will this tiny little thing take this great big canoe with outrigger kit. Um, this is going to go in the water. This is a standard 12 expander craft. And this is the one that's rigged up. That's going to be my photo uh, boat when we do this next one. I am not going to be able to get everything in on one video. This is the introduction and we're going to test this motor right now. Oh, make sure to subscribe, expandthecraft.com, and if you do, you'll not only be able to uh, keep up with what we do with these boats, there we go, I need to slide that forward. Now I use a rudder. The reason I use a rudder is because one, I can steer the boat from anywhere on the boat. And if you're steering with the motor, the thrust kind of wants to steer it. And so you're constantly doing a little left, little right, little left, little right, little left. That's annoying. Now we're moving along quite nicely. Later uh, on the next video, I will give you the, the numbers, the digits. Uh, as to how fast each speed goes on each motor, but I'm not going to take the time to do that on this video. Uh, do subscribe, and we will have that listed either on the comments or or somewhere. We're, we're going to probably post it. We'll find that out so we don't have a 25-minute long video just to see speeds. But I'm seeing this would be a very comfortable speed to cruise up and down a river, and it's only setting number two. Setting number three. Setting number three, I am hearing water splashing. And this is getting somewhere speed. I must be doing about four knots, probably. I will tell that later again. Um, I will give the speeds of each motor eventually, but not all in one day. It's just too much to do. I'm gonna try. Oh no, that's full throttle. I'm, I lied. That's full throttle. But that's this is get somewhere speed, but not really necessary. Remember to follow us, expandthecraft.com. You get to see all the videos of the build and the different uh, motors that we're going to test. Not bad. Now I'm going to stop this one. 
And what we're going to do is, I'm going to pull this one off. Let me show you something else here. I built this big, ugly, temporary thing because I had intended to do this motor on this side and this motor on that side, but this motor has a shorter shaft, so it didn't fit. Uh, it, it wouldn't get down in the water. So I said, oh, what am I going to do? Well, this is what I did. I just hooked it to the gunnel of the boat, and I used the plunge to bring it up. If you'll notice. And then the duck tail there. Now it's out of the water. All right. So that we can now test this one. Um, where do I get it to go down? And that one is the Motor Guide 40 pound thrust. Motor Guide 40. All right, I'm going to go straight to full throttle on this for right now. And it seems to be doing quite a respectable job. I'm going to take this out of the water here. Now, I was saying, you know what? I don't see a lot of speed difference. Maybe a, the 55 might be a little faster, but not by much. Well, here's my thing is if you, if you stay on this next video, I'm going to take this ugly temporary thing off. And if you notice, I got a seat right here. I'm going to see how fast I can actually paddle this boat or if I can paddle it at all. Uh, because you need to, you're not, if, if you're going down a river, and you're just going at the speed of the river flow, the rudder is not going to have any effect because you have to have water running across the blade for it to have a steering effect. So because I've decked over all of this, you can't do a paddle stroke from the normal seating position. But remember, with an outrigger kit, you're no longer relegated to sitting where the canoe seats were posted. Um, and so I put the canoe, the seat, it's a stadium seat. It's like 28 bucks, very cheap. So easy, replaceable. Um, and I put it way back in the back so that I can have my feet like this. I can sit like this instead of canoe when your feet and your knees are up in your chest. So it should be a, a more comfortable position than a regular canoe seat. And um, although you won't go as fast as you would if you were just doing the canoe, um, because you're, you're towing uh, the rest of this, this is an expedition boat. This is what it's made for. You can't do on a pontoon boat what you can do on this. And we're gonna show you in the next video going underneath a bridge uh, and, and doing things that you can't do. And obviously you can't take a pontoon boat, break it down and put it on the roof rack of your truck. Uh, you can't take it apart and use it with just the canoe. A pontoon boat is a whole different thing. So for all you haters out there who say, why don't you just get a real boat? Well, that's why. Uh, I can put this on the roof rack and still tow my RV camper. Can't do that with a pontoon boat. Can't tow a 36 foot RV and then a 20 foot pontoon boat. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take this off and see what I can do with paddling it. And then I'm going to fashion this little baby, probably maybe even to the front. It might work right there. And uh, But that's going to be on a separate video. Um, I'm just going to call this pretty well even, the, the 55 and the 40. Now, what I don't know is, does the 55 draw so much more power than the 40 that that teeny weeny little bit of extra speed that this one may give, does it matter? Because I've got this 40 right here, and I can't imagine needing much more than this in a boat like this. Uh, yes, you could use gas motors. Uh, you could put, um, you know, a gas motor on the side. And as long as you uh, know which way your propeller goes, a left or a right screw, you put it on this or that side because of prop walk. 
Google it, prop walk. It makes your boat go this way or that. And if you set it on one side or the other, you can counteract the prop walk with placing it on the left or the right instead of exacerbating the problem by putting it on the wrong side. So, hey, got a little knowledge up here. Would like to share it with you. Uh, you can also buy a flatback canoe. Uh, this one is pointy, really, really efficient through the water. And it's showing it. Okay, I'm gonna cut for now. We're gonna come back and we're gonna put this boat in the water, the one with the Vaquita motor. And we've done some tests on that one. It's the bomb. One day, I'm gonna put that Vaquita motor on here. Uh, but I have to make a whole new apparatus uh, so that it fits onto the canoe. Right now it's fit for the Expandacraft 12 foot paddle cap. Um, Expandacraft.com, check us out. Our next video is going to be more of the in water testing uh, of this Expandacraft 16 foot 9 inch outrigger canoe.